we are getting closer to being done with our modeling. We just have a few more things left to do and in this video we're going to create this railing. So let's get started. Let's create the cylinder, move it into position and let's set the radius to 2.5, subdivision axis to 12 and height to 90. We need to modify pivot point to be at a bottom vertex right in the center so we can snap this railing post to the grid and to the ground plane of the second floor and also snap it to the grid in top view. Now I want this railing piece to be snapped to the grid a bit closer to the edge. So let's decrease our grid spacing to 5 and snap it a bit closer here. We're gonna soften the inner edges for smooth shading before we duplicate. So select these inner edges, soften edge. Let's disable wireframe unshaded to see how smooth it looks. And that looks pretty good. Now we're going to duplicate this piece and decide where they will go along the railing. So essentially we are blocking in the vertical pieces of the railing. Duplicate, move and snap one in the corner here. Another one right here, right before the stairs. And then we're going to have three of them going down the stairs. Two in the middle and one at the very first step. Again, make sure you're snapping to the grid. That way every single one of them will be lined up. That is looking good. Now let's block in the horizontal railing. Come back to the very first one, duplicate and rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to adjust the vertices slightly, move them a little closer, but leave a bit of space because we'll be creating the connection pieces by bridging faces. Duplicate it again, rotate it 90 degrees and move it into position here. Then we're going to duplicate one more time for the angled piece going down the stairs. Now at the moment it's hard to tell how high these railings are going to be. We know that 90 units up is halfway up the player's height. But let's quickly create a human reference scale right up here on the second floor to check. So I'm going to create a cube, move it up to position it up here, set width and depth to 60 and height to 180. Modify the pivot point, we're going to snap this to the ground plane and the scale looks pretty good. So I'm going to keep this reference and just drop it in into the scale layer. Let's come back to the railing for the stairs, scale it to make it longer, then rotate down a bit just to estimate the angle. Then scale a bit more until the railing is long enough and is next to the first vertical rail. Let's adjust the rotation by entering a specific value. We need the end to be a bit higher, so I'm going to enter negative 117.25. You might have to enter a value that works for you. We want to have enough space between these two railings so we can bridge later. Let's adjust the vertices and move them back. We need to move them according to the object and not the world. So hold control, shift, right click hold and choose object. Now we can better adjust these vertices. So I'm going to move them back, snapping them to the grid. Then let's come back to the beginning of this rail and move it down a bit. That looks pretty good. We have the top blocked in. Now select these three rails, switch back to world, duplicate, and move them down to the middle. It's time to begin connecting these rails. We're going to begin with these two rails first. Let's go to top view, and we need to adjust the vertices, moving them back so we have more space for the bridging to happen. So we're going to move each set of vertices back, then select both rails, and combine them so they are a single object. Select these inner faces and bridge them. Change curve type to blend and increase divisions to 4. Then we need to soften the edges. So select these new edges and soften them. Disable wireframe unshaded to check and it's looking good. 
Next we're going to bridge the straight rail and the angled rail. Move the vertices a bit closer and make sure you're using object transformation mode and not world. Then we need to combine these two rails so they are a single object. Otherwise bridging will not work. Select the interfaces, bridge them, set curve type to blend and increase the divisions. Soften the new edges and let's check. Disable wireframe unshaded. That's looking pretty good. We're going to delete this single edge in the front because it doesn't contribute to our curve. Let's duplicate this rail and use it for the middle since we already have it created. We need to modify the pivot point to be in the beginning center vertex so we can easily snap to the grid. And then remove the placeholders that we were using before. So delete the three straight rails we had duplicated earlier. Let's bridge between the two railings in the front. We need to modify the height of the straight railing first, move it down, because we're estimating the curve of how it's going to blend. So the top faces were a bit too high. So that's why we needed to move the vertices down to create more space. Combine the two railings into a single object, select interfaces and bridge them. Curve type to blend and divisions to four. Then soften the new edges. Let's check. That's looking good. This middle railing will intersect the vertical straight one. So we're going to use the multi-cut tool, control shift X and make a straight cut by holding down shift, left click, drag and hold. Delete these faces so we have a straight edge. So then we can move these vertices into this rail, hold X and snap them to the grid. And because we've kept all the railing on the grid, these vertices will align perfectly and they will be positioned right in the middle of the vertical rail. Let's come back to this upper part and remove a single edge ring that doesn't contribute to the shape. Now we're going to come back up top and focus on bridging these two rails. We need to adjust the vertices for both rails in order to create the space for the bridging curve to happen. So I'm going to move the vertices down to the side, making sure I snap to the grid. Then we need to combine both rails to a single object. Select the inner faces, bridge them, set curve type to blend, and increase the divisions. Then soften the edges. We now have this connection completed. Next, come down to the middle rail, delete the faces on the end cap, then select the vertices, hold X to snap to the grid, and move them into the vertical straight rail. Again, because we kept everything on the grid, this will be positioned right in the middle of the straight vertical rail, and it will be aligned perfectly. We now need to deal with all the straight vertical rails. What we're going to do is decrease the radius, the thickness of each of these rails, so they can properly overlap the horizontal rails and not cause any geometry flickering. Because at their current size, their current thickness, we might experience some polygon flickering where the geometry overlaps. So let's select this vertical rail and decrease the scale on X, Y, and Z to 0.8. Let's position it better. Make sure it is inside this other rail, overlapping and intersecting properly. That's looking good. Delete the faces on the top and the bottom that the player is not going to see. Then grab the top vertices and readjust the height so the top is intersecting and is inside this top rail. Again, you want to disable wireframe unshaded to check if there's any geometry flickering or any issues that you may need to fix. And actually, I'm going to increase the scale of this rail to 0.85, making it slightly bigger, and then readjust the height, the top vertices, and move them down a bit. Let's do the same thing for the other three rails we have. 
Let's delete the top and the bottom faces. Then scale this rail to 0.85. Modify the height, pushing the vertices up to intersect the top rail, placing them inside. And move it to the side a bit. Let's come down to the second one. Delete the top and the bottom faces. Scale to 0.85. Readjust the vertices, pushing them up. And checking to see if the vertices are not overlapping with the top of the rail. Making sure they are positioned exactly inside. And that's looking good. And let's do this one more time. Delete the top and the bottom faces. Adjust the scale. Move the vertices up. And check. We also need to delete the bottom faces on this main railing. So let's do that really quick. And we are done with our railing. Let's export and test this inside Unreal Engine 4. We haven't done this in a few videos and we want to take a look what the results are inside the game engine. So I'm going to select everything, export, and overwrite our FPX file. Inside Unreal Engine 4, we're going to re-import and fly around and take a look. The railing looks great. Then we have the wires the electric pipes, the electric boxes, and the electric meter. And everything is looking good.